Demons manifest as death, as poverty, as sickness, as wickedness, and as crisis. But they don't just manifest. They manifest because certain provisions are available. If you remove these provisions from your life, the demons will be disarmed. So what are the provisions that empower demons? Number one is ignorance. If you don't know that you are in the middle of battle, you will be sleeping when your life is being taken away. And if you don't know how to deal with that battle, even though you know you are in a battle, you won't know what to do to help yourself. That is the plague of ignorance. The plague of ignorance makes you helpless. So helpless that you know you are dying, but there's nothing you can do about it. And that is one thing that empowers demons so much. When they find an ignorant person, they build their abode there. In Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 17 to 18, the Bible said, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye, ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. And so there is a common wealth of God for every believer. He said, but for the believers who walk like the Gentiles, whose understanding is darkened, he said, even though there is a common wealth for believers, he said, these ones never experience it. And the reason they never experience it is because their hearts are blinded. Who is the blinder of the hearts of men? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded their minds, that they may not be able to see the glorious gospel, who is Christ Jesus, the image of the invincible God. And so when the devil succeeds through vanity to blind your heart, you become a puppet of that spirit. That's why many times we teach people the way of consecration. When we tell people not to be worldly, it's not just about serving God. It's about opening their eyes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 12, the Bible said, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. I think verse 14 rather, Neither can he know them. He said, Because they are spiritually discerned. So when a man lives at the plane of naturality, when a man lives worldly, what he doesn't know is that his eyes are blinded from Ebenezer, the help of God that you should access. And so the first way to disarm demons and their oppression from your life is to buy the truth. Is to come into understanding. Because lying in understanding is the totality of your victory. Number two, what empowers demons in order to manifest in a man's life? Fear. You know, the natural thing that every man picks up from birth in addition to hunger is fear. When you have a small child, leave that child in a room. The child will be so afraid and start crying. You will be wondering who taught that child. The reason is because fear came with the fall. The moment Adam fell, he became afraid and he hid himself. And so when the devil wants to exploit you, he will check whether your fear has been substituted with faith and boldness. If your fear has not yet been substituted, then the devil will plunder you. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15, it said, for as much them as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that have the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And so one thing that keeps men in bondage is fear. The fear of the unknown, the fear of death, the fear of the devil. But the Bible says we have not received the spirit of fear. We have not received the spirit of fear. We have received the spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. And so when you find a man that demons easily manifest in and through is a man that has made himself a slave through fear. The third thing that gives demons authority to manifest in your life is disobedience. In Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 2, 
The Bible said, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Now, when people are being lured by demons to disobey God, they don't know that it's a complex demonic intelligence. Because the more you walk in rebellion, the weaker you become in contending with demons. And so the devil knows that all the power in heaven and on earth is already with you. But the way he will get you never to wield it is to get you disobeying God. And because he cannot show up with two horns and tell you disobey God, he will plunder your lust. And so he will look for something that your lust is susceptible to. And then he will get that thing to get you disobey God. He knows that so long as you are disobeying God, no matter how much effort you put in, no matter how much you try, you cannot get what you are looking for because it takes supernatural power to prosper in life. Hear this. Nobody prospering is prospering just because he's intelligent. Nobody prospering is prospering just because he has human connection. There are supernatural undertone to every glorious destiny. And everyone who is prospering in light is walking in perpetual obedience to God. Because if you choose the path of disobedience, you become a slave of the devil. Adam was created as a dominion. The word is curiotis. He said, let them have dominion. The earth belonged to Adam. It was his possession. The Bible said the heavens belong to God. He said, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. But the moment Adam went in the path of disobedience, the devil didn't need to say, give me the scepter. When the devil was talking to Jesus, he said, bow to me. I will give you the glory of the world, for it has been delivered to me. I am now the God of this world. Whether Adam knew it or not, does not matter. The moment he disobeyed, he became a servant. And his life became a theater through which the devil could manifest anything he wanted to manifest. That's why Adam died. He was not created to die. Adam was created an immortal. You will remain sick if you keep walking in disobedience. Even Jesus himself, when he healed men, he said, go and sin no more. Lest a worse thing happen to you. Because if you keep walking in disobedience, you will remain vulnerable. Our vulnerability is tied to our disobedience. Our immutability is tied to our obedience. Find a vulnerable man. He's a disobedient man. Find a, an impregnable fortress. That's the man walking perpetually in obedience. Because what opens the gate to demons to plunder men is the path of disobedience. Number four. What gives demons right and authority to rule people and to molest them is willful desire. It's not everybody who is oppressed that you think is forced into it. Many people pursued after spirit, desired what spirit had, and they were taken aback when those spirits take, took over. It's not everybody that is forced into bondage. Some people walked their way willingly into bondage. In fact, I read one scripture, James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And death is one of the manifestations of oppression. So many people journeyed into death by their lust. They willfully followed that pathway because they didn't know that there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is dead. Hope you know the tree is called the tree of the knowledge of what? Good and evil. There are certain good that has evil at the end. And so if you are not led of God and you yield to your lust, most times you will end up in chains and in captivity because demons can use your desires to plunder you. Finally, what gives demons authority are covenants, oaths, and truces. People go into agreement with demons for demons to empower them. But it is only God that blesses and adds no sorrow. Every other spirit that blesses added sorrow to their blessings. And so when a man does not quickly detach from covenants with demons, 
that man is already on the pathway to oppression. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8, he says, He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. He says, He that breaketh the hedge, a serpent will bite. And so the reason many people are troubled today is because they broke their covenants with demons. And they didn't enter a superior covenant with God. And the moment the hedge is broken, the moment the insurance system of God is violated, and they went into covenant with other spirits, they became vulnerable. Because it is the way of demonic spirits to plunder men. This is why Isaiah 49 verse 24 called some people lawful captives. They are lawful captives because a demon didn't sneak into them. They willingly went into covenant with those demons. He said, shall the priest be taken from the hands of the mighty? He said, shall the lawful captive be delivered? So there are certain captives that are supposed to be captives because of what they have done. So they are not slaves because they were overpowered. They are slaves because they chose it. Either through their will or through their agreement, oaths and covenants with demons. And so men are theaters that reveal spirits. Everything you are going through today is a revelation of a spirit that is either consciously or unconsciously in fraternity with you.